Hello everyone. Okay, so uh, I don't normally do this sort of thing. Not very good at it, but it's not a review. All right, I'm just gonna, I bought this uh, a week ago, uh, maybe um, less time than that, but no longer than a week ago. I've had some lovely fun with it. It's um, very easy to fly. What if, once you get past the, the part where uh, the thumbs, hold on. Um, yeah, so this is a, you know, it's a great little craft, but I found it a bit difficult. Um, well, I found it easier to control than some of them, because some of these craft that you get these days come with these, and this can be quite difficult. This one comes with this big, massive uh, remote there, which, to be honest with you, I prefer that to these smaller ones, because I find that I can, I pinch, I sort of do a, I don't do a full pinch like this, like a hybrid thing. And I can move this around and I'll show you on here. It just means when I'm flying, I can use these areas just to keep things where I want them to um, and do this. But they both have these sprung, um, the sprung throttle because what it tries to do is it uses an optical flow sensor uh, from what I understand and it will take off and bring itself to a certain height and it will help you with an altitude hold type thing keep your altitude and um, which means you've got to fine tune how you use this now that's all well and good if you're used to doing it like that but i've been used to having one of these on my Sima and on my normal transmitter as well and um, that's what i have on my tirana so um i i do like going back to this one today um it was really difficult for me to get that throttle position you've got to retrain myself to get that throttle position because that's how i control like i find it difficult like this sometimes because uh, you can see what's happening to my thumb down there as i'm going down there so i you know, i sort of just keep them both like this but that's my preference um and I'll do a, a little video on this, maybe tomorrow or later. So you get, to, uh, you know, you get a box, you get the bits and pieces, got a thing so you can plug in to charge the battery, plug the batteries in this and you just plug that straight into the USB. You got a, um, a screwdriver to take the, the, the tops out, I believe. Uh, no, 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 sorry, the screwdriver to take the screws out from underneath. There's a whole bunch of screws here. I believe the, 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 the props are screw on, but we're gonna have to find that out. There's some little rubber pads there because you can take all this gear off and the landing feet here and put the little pads on. If you can see that down the bottom, but you can put the little pads on down there. And I'd like to take that off, but I just wanted to show people with it on, because that's how it comes. It comes in the box already pre-set up and everything. So this is great. And it has the plastic interior stuff, so you can put it back in the molded plastic. And you could put it all back in the box with the radio and take it anywhere you like, you know, on the day where there's pretty much you know, next to no wind, because uh, it's very light, 50 grams, including the, including the little battery that comes with it. So, instructions. Yeah, you probably want to go over there for calibration reasons and, and bits and pieces. We're not going to go through all the instructions on this. If you want me to go through all the instructions, uh, we can do that in a different video. But on this today, it's just about this because I'll put some flight footage up um, at the end just because it, this is quite small, obviously. So if you're flying around 10, 15 feet in front of you, it's quite small on the screen. So I can't shrink it down, put it up into the corner, uh, really. So um, <clears throat> it doesn't have a camera. This is the sort of thing I would suggest, as well as a Sima, but I did a whole bunch of stuff on the Sima flights and that, and then realised you can't actually get them anymore. Or if you can, it's going to be very hard, but these are on sale today. These are the sort of things you can pick up. Uh, £28, $28, pretty much works out to be the same thing. Good fun. It's got three um, settings. You've got the automatic takeoff, Ooh, it takes you up to a certain height, about a metre off the ground. Um, you've got a you know the three settings on here. I've been using it in one to start off with, just flying around indoors. This is what I found great. It's great to fly around indoors. You can fly in and out your windows as well in the room. If you've got two windows in one room, that's what I've been doing as well. Um, and yeah, it's it's really good fun. I would suggest something like this, nice and easy to get hold of, and because of this.
because this is apart from this thing having this thing that sticks in the middle um, I imagine these are just single units in here you're not going to have um, you know compression type leaves and springs and stuff things and screws that you can adjust to stop this um, but I would say that these are the better control uh, yeah so but what we're going to do now is because I've broken it and this propeller <coughs> doesn't go I'll show you what we're going to do now is find out if this is easy to repair because if it's just the one hit wonder like you know you, you smash it and then it, it's gone um i don't know i don't know if that's any value really but we're going to take it apart and we're going to start to start getting into it so first of all i'm going to take these off the outside now what this can do i should have probably told you all this as i was going through what this can do which does appear to be a bit of a pain in the back side Maybe if I shift that out of the way, I can push this up here. A bit better on the screen, sorry about that. Um, is when, and you know, depending on what you fly, right, you may or you may not crash. I'm going to probably find that I should have turned the props off, taking the props off first. So let's look at the props. So we can see our leading edge is here and here. So this is coming inwards which means that these two are opposing go outwards. So I would think then that these props are gonna be just going after the little prop tool, similar sort of thing as what you get with a Hubson, but on a miniature type of scale. So let's have a little look. I'm gonna have to bring my mic down and take a peek in here. Let me just see if I can pop these into these holes. Maybe there's a Maybe you just pull it off like that. Well, there doesn't appear to be a thread, so. All right, well, fair enough. That means we can just go around there, just gently putting those underneath, popping those off. Well, that makes that very, very easy. Brilliant for a bit of repair work. All right, let's see if uh, other things are as, are as less complicated. I could have tried to do that the other way around, I don't know. All right, so we're going to take off these from the outside. We're going to have to take off this here onto six screws, seven screws here. But let's take these off anyway and get these off the outsides. This battery on these lasts for about five minutes. You're not really going to get much more than five minutes out of it, and depending on the batteries, like I'm on a little bit of a pickle at the moment because I bought a whole bunch of batteries, an extra five. Um, just because I found them 15 pounds on Amazon. That's where I found this, 28 pounds on Amazon. Um, we can imagine how much lighter that's gonna be. We can weigh these, I've kept the screws in there so we can weigh them and see what type of weight it takes off this. Because remember, this isn't really for flying outdoors, not unless you've got the perfect wind conditions. Um, and I wouldn't fly it up high, it's so small. Uh, you, you're not going to keep visual line of sight and of course there's no FPV with us so you can't turn to your FPV to see where you're at or what you're doing. Alright, so let's just put those there. Where am I putting them? Let's put those up out of the way. Let's get these propellers out of the way now. It's going to be easy enough to pop out. So what we're going to do now then is just take these seven screws out. Should probably find myself a little container or something to put these in. Just keep everything together. Just because I don't want to. I don't want to pop. You know, if I if I drop something or something clap down, these screws shoot off somewhere. It's not very good. Not very good at all. Uh, yeah, not been. Uh, I, I went to see some family, did a bit of work uh, down south. So my family at the same time. Got a cold. Not given by my uh, nieces and such nephews. Well, not all of them. It's just some of them. We got ill. And then, well, I think it was a cold, or it was something to do with just being down here. Could have been. I don't know if you get hay fever this time of year. Or I don't know if it was my body just saying, "Go home." You don't want to be here, go on. Uh, back now. 
not sniffing so much today. I have been for the last few days sniffing all over the place, but not seeming to have a cold, just sniffing. Right, let's see how easy this comes off. Just uh, let's just try and give it a little tiny bit of a tug there. Just make sure we got all the screws out, I'm not working against ourselves. All right, let me see if I've got my little one. Yes. Yeah, so we can not just pop just round some of the edges where it is. Looks like it's supposed to be a little bit of a there we go. There we go. Well there's not a lot to that, is there? Not a lot to that at all. Wow, I mean it's all on one board, even the antenna for the um, 2.4 gigs is on I mean. Well at least I think this is what this is, is the antenna going around. Are there any screws to take that out? I can't see anything. We don't really need to take that out, it's this one that I found to be faulty, even though now the propellers aren't on. Um, yeah, I can best spin it up by just putting that propeller on, on there, just pushing it down. Pretty nice, it's easier. Yep, just push it down slightly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna battery it and put it on. And uh, we'll see what's what. No, I don't suppose it matters if this isn't one of its batteries, but it'll fit. And it'll give us juice. Oh, ah yes. Now there's something I've noticed about these batteries that, um, where is it? Oh, no, that's a mile out of the place, isn't it? Oh, no, we pull that down there. Will that make life easier? It will, but um, so far, we've missed anything so far. I'm really sorry. But, uh, so what we're going to do anyway is just put this on now. And then we're going to get this uh, just up, pulled down and that'll get its connection. And then on here you've got, uh, this is what, uh, take off and land. This is to go headless, so it doesn't matter about which way the craft is, no matter what you do on the sticks. If you go like this, it doesn't matter which way the craft points in, left, right, reverse, forward, it'll just go forward. If you go backwards the same, it doesn't matter which way it's facing. When you're in headless mode, that's what it does. This one, that's second speed, third speed, default one speed and this is easy you can flip it and these are your normal trims you know um, uh, pitch forward and back and uh, roll roll bank left bank right roll left roll right so what we're going to do is just put this on so as you can hear the other yep yeah, that's working that's working that's working but this one isn't working So now I want it to stop. We'd have to hold that all the way down, maybe. No. Nope. Uh, press that until it stops. Okay, so I'm just going to turn the power off. Well, the problems I find with the batteries is that uh, even though you know the battery still works, it's got a tick on this one, so it lasts the longest. Now the problem is it doesn't last the longest anymore because. The wires are breaking in here, so sometimes it gets connection, sometimes it doesn't. But with the vibration of the craft, that's the case of it turning itself on and off while you're trying to fly. Not very good fun at all. Uh, right, so yeah, we can see that there's an issue then with this motor. So we got to see about disconnecting this motor or seeing what's wrong with it. Now, I don't know if you can see what I can see there, but we seem to see some threads or some wire. Let's see how close I can get this. Now I can't see that very well from this position at all. So I'm going to need to look underneath here and say, ah, well it's not the motor that's gone then, is it? It's that wire, it's disconnected. We have a broken wire. Okay, well that's excellent because hopefully that will be the problem. And that means I don't have to faff around with trying to get one of these because they look like they might have some resin in there, some potting resin. <laughs> it might be a bit of a pain. 
Um, but it does look like that that is. I just want to, want to, I just want to make sure that things in focus. This camera, but as you can see there, I can see that there. That ah uh, yeah, we got this now. If I just give it a little bit of a tweak with the end of this, so you can just pop it up all the way. And there we go. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's just a terrible dry joint type of uh, connection. And it's rubbish. So we can redo that with the soldering iron, the old faithful. And uh, how do we deal with that? But I'll come back when I've done that because it's all this prattling around now. It's going to take too much time. Okay then, guys. So just using a bit of a bit of solder there. We've um, hopefully made good that connection. Yep. A little look at the rest of it just to make sure that, that doesn't look like it's going to fall off. Just doing another check on that. But it's not, and there is a little tiny screw there to set the board out. Um, there's a possibility there's supposed to be one there as well, but it doesn't come with that one. But you got one holding it in there. And it's not tiny, that's got everything on. It's got ESCs, the brushed motors, so it's brushed ESC on here. Yeah, but look at that, that's just there. Uh, be nice to see what's on the other side, but I don't really want to start trying to, the wires are very short. And uh, these, like I say, I don't really want to mess these around too much. Let's put some battery power on it and see what happens. Hopefully this will show that it's a worker now. And I get to have some more fun time. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I'm going to just turn the radio off see what happens. Oh no, it's still going to go. So let me see if I can, uh, there you go, it just spun itself out. Now, there's uh, that's one of the problems I can see with these. See, when it's doing all the things it's supposed to be doing and it lands a little dump like that and it'll switch off. If it lands too gentle, it won't switch off. And then it will sit here and start vibrating, boom, 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 because I've seen it do that. I'm not saying this is a reason not to buy it. I'm just saying this is, look, they can say, hey, we design this to do this when this happens, when this happens. When it has a crash, it can it can do so many different things. Like you could have, uh, I had it so it went nose into the ground, soft dirt, and one of the propellers got stuck in the dirt. And so the other one's trying to get around, but this one's just doing its thing. Now, hopefully, it's not going to knock up the motors too much because you see, this is just pushed on, which means that it's not screwed on, which means you're not going against the thread of this and it's still trying to go round. Hopefully this is just going to slip, right? I mean, after a while that slipping thing will become too much and it won't fly properly, but that's when you change the props out. Because you can see like little bits of damage on those. If you, if you look at them, you can see like little bits of damage and bits of green because it's been grass cutting because I fly quite low a lot of the time because you know, but you'll see on the footage. Uh, but that's it, yeah, that's done. Simple, easy little repair. But that's all you're gonna have on these. You're just gonna have like a couple of ES, you know, you're gonna have your ESCs and you're gonna be on a little tiny block on there, probably all four in one. And uh, they're just gonna control these motors. You're gonna have a, a gyroscope in here so it can hold itself steady and you can calibrate that just by doing the bottom left, bottom left on both sticks. And that'll calibrate the old um, gyroscope there on the flat, on the level. Uh, and it says you want to do that whenever you sort of bounce it or crash it, and I tend to do that to keep everything okay. It's dead easy to trim. Uh, yeah, and it's fantastic to fly. This is if you've got a, a lounge like I have, very small, you can just fly this around the lounge. Maybe I should just get a bit of footage of that. There's so much flying yesterday of it, um, and you know it's so disappointing when I brought it in to charge up all the batteries again and put it in and find that one's not working. But I thought that'd be great. So I wanted to see what it'd be like to take apart anyway. But we've not taken the motor out, but I don't want to take them out until there's something that happens to them. But when it comes around to doing that, we'll do it again. Or unless I sacrifice this for it. But at the moment, I'm having fun playing with it. 28 pounds. You want to learn how to fly, fly one of these. But you'd be better off finding a Simer because if you're going to learn how to fly, look, look, the flight is close to money as you can. Try and get one that drops all the way, you know, like, uh, uh, like the other radio here, like the Simon radio. 
It drops all the way. You've got to control your throttle. You get to control the thrust for the height altitude. Well, that's what you're controlling with this. And uh, having it done for you is all well and good. If it centers, you, know, you stop the sticks. That's great for when you're learning how to do the rest of it. Once you've learned how to do this, get on to doing this for yourself. It's a different experience, you have more control, and it's easier once you get used to it. Much easier. Right, that's it for this video, guys. And uh, there won't be any more, you know, big breaks or anything. And I'll see you in the next one very, very soon.